Hey everyone and welcome to another video on Eternals Information Technology Group. Today's video will be about me trying to save my buddy's Xbox 360. Uh, it's getting the red ring of death. I'm going to do a thorough cleaning, reapplication of thermal paste, and power up to see if it works. Uh, from what I can tell, it's heavily dusty everywhere on the inside. And I'll show you each step to do similar things to yours if it's dying. It's the original Xbox 360, the PHAT Fat Edition. Uh, so wish me luck. Okay, to start with, we're going to remove the hard drive and the front panel. It's a 60 gigabyte hard drive. Normally these do not wind up dusty because they are mostly enclosed. I will be cleaning the sides though. Uh, let's see. First you grab right here, pull one up. Ouch. As you can see, like I said, it is currently very dusty. Um, next step is to remove these two gray panels. We'll take our Vastar screw kit. Get a bit that's small enough to fit inside the holes here. Oh. Oh. I will show you how to tell where the tabs are. They are normally easy to find. Just pull up lightly here and then hunt around here for that first tab. The tabs are about the same on each side. Another way you can tell is by these little uh, filled up spots. Those are where the tabs are. Very dusty, people. As you can see, it is heavily clogged with dust. This sex box may not be able to be saved. But I'm keeping my fingers crossed just because if I can save it, it's proof that... Oh, my buddy doesn't have to buy another Xbox. Let's see. As you can see, this one is not as easy to find the tabs because they are not filled in. But they're about middle. And this one. Last hole is underneath this. Next thing we need to do is break this seal right here. Just to make it easier for us to work on it. This is a so-called factory seal by Microsoft. I have heard many things about such seals, such as they are technically against the law. I don't know. Okay. See if I can get it up close on my close up camera. If you see these tabs here, come on, focus. You see these little slots here. You can use a screwdriver like from my Avastar screw, screw kit, and it will allow you to pop them apart just by getting this in there enough. Now that 
side is done, we'll go ahead and do this side. Yes, they do sell tools for this, but not everyone's got money for tools. Now that we got that side done, we will unlink these little tabs here to finish dismantling this portion. And yes, people, it is extremely dusty. In order to take the this side of the panel off, you need to unscrew six uh, screws. This one, this, 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 and this. Leave the gold screws alone for now as they hold the motherboard in place and you have several other components you need to take out before you can take out the motherboard. Now that we got the six screws out, we can lift it from the edges of the white piece so that it doesn't slam onto something. And just very carefully hold on up. Please note that there is this little thing here which grabs about right here. So just lightly lift that up and take a little off. As you can see people, this is very dusty. I will put it up to my other camera so you all can see better. I'm pretty sure that this is what led to it most likely acting up real bad. So we'll do a light dusting with our can there. That's a lot of dust people. This is why I say make sure your equipment's in a nice dust-free area. Otherwise, you should do your best to make sure it stays nice and dust-free. So, first thing we're going to do after we got this far is disconnect the CD game drive. <laughs> and so on, since I took one of these apart, I forgot about the silver tab. There we Now that we got that out, we can go ahead and take this off. Give them the dusting now that that's off. And quite honestly, I've seen worse, but we're going to go ahead and take it fully apart so that we can work on it some more. Next step, you remove this clip here. 
Don't lose it. Then you take off these three bolts here. Well, screws, whatever. If I remember right, those are a... Yes, they are a different size. Let's try the T8. And it is perfect. The reason you have to take this out first is because it connects through a metal slot in here to the motherboard for its connection. It uh, is what allows your wireless equipment to work on this, like your controller and the so-called Xbox remote. I love video editing. I'm speeding through a lot of this eventually. Now that we got that out, one quick look. Next we should take out the fan. Power connectors in here. By the way, if anyone has a arc Xbox Arcade Edition, I will happily buy that off you. Just because I can use it to get the old blade menu back and I miss the blade menu. Just nostalgia. Now that we got that out, we can disc uh, unscrew the screws on the bottom. What's left of them. Now, the reason that these are here like this is because these help hold on the heat sink, which I'll show you how to remove in a minute. First, let's go ahead and get all this apart. Wow, it's been so long since I took one of these apart. <laughs> This was my personal Xbox, I'd be using a drill on it. Never do that, as you have a chance of cracking the board, stripping a screw. I do it just because it's fast. And yes, I've damaged my board once already. There's a reason I did a 12-volt mod. Let's switch back on over to our T8, see if that will work. It does. Make sure I'm getting this on this camera. Man. Now, I always unbolt this in a cross pattern just to be safe. Don't want to cause any undue stress on any of the parts. You just lift it up with this side coming up first. I will now explain to you the reason for the X clamps on the 360. From what I have understood from research and from what I've seen of actual computer processor backplates. 
These X clamps are here for a reason. Do not use the so-called X clamp mod. These are here to help with flexing on the board. These processes get so hot that they can cause flexing in the system. Uh, the flexing can cause cracking. But because these are here, they stop it from warping in any way or shape or form. If you were to look up the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo, you will see it comes with a back plate. So do any of the all-in-one CPU water coolers or any kind of CPU block heat sink setup. Those are there on those as well to help with the flexing issue. They are there to basically save you from spending hundreds of dollars on replacement parts. Uh. So people, I hope you enjoyed part one of today's video. The second part will be released on Monday of this upcoming week. This Sunday, I have to go to a friend's house and rewind some security footage because something got stolen out of their backyard, so... Meh. Anyways, uh... Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, I ask that you press like. If you disliked it, press dislike. I just ask that you please uh, leave a comment in the uh, comment section on what you disliked about my video. I've seen that several people do not like long videos so far from what I have been able to put together on viewing time through YouTube's uh, view by minute thing. Uh, so I will try to make my videos shorter from now on. Not much shorter though because some things just you have to explain about. Uh, I will see y'all in the second part.